Hello and welcome to another episode of PCI's Tech TV. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look at precision overlay analysis. Specifically, we're going to be looking at precision overlay analysis as it pertains to identifying road hazards in a flooding event. So what we want to do is we want to identify the specific areas where a road vector layer intersects a flooding event. So we're going to start off with essentially a data product where we have a uh, vector line segment identifying roads and then we have a raster uh, raster layer which identifies the flooding event. What we want to do is we then want to identify or perform an overlay where we get the specific or the very precise areas where a vector road layer intersects the flood. So if we look at our output result that we want to achieve if we go to a zoom in on a certain line segment or on a road we can see the result that we want to achieve. Now, th how does this differ from a normal vector overlay analysis? So with PCI's Geomatica and many other softwares, it is possible to perform a vector-to-vector -vector overlay analysis. But what this does is it's going to identify the entire shape, or the, like an entire segment, for example, that where the intersection occurs. So just to give you a better idea what that means is if where you can see this road segment or the shape from here from that node down to here, it intersects only a part, only on certain specific parts. Uh, it doesn't intersect the flood. Now what would happen in a normal, more common overlay analysis is that it's going to identify the entire shape or the entire arc um, that occurs right here, the, for example, the entire road segment right here. We don't want that because there's quite a few um, portions along this road that are not hazardous. So that is, uh, that is not what we want to identify in this example. What we want to identify is the precise areas where um, the flood intersects, or that the roads rather intersect the flood, as we can see here. So we're going to start off with, as you can see, our, uh, our, two input our two input layers. So the first input layer is a vector shape file, as you can see here. So I'm just going to go to our table of contents. This is our vector uh, line, rather, identifying roads. And then underneath that, we have a raster uh, layer identifying uh, flooded areas uh, from non-flooded areas. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work within the raster domain. So what we want to do is we want to convert the vector road layer to a raster layer. So to do that, we're going to go to Tools, Algorithm Librarian, and we're going to use a line to RAS function. Now, when we double click on it, it's going to open up the line to RAS module control panel. And our first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the files tab. So we want to set up our inputs and our outputs. So we're going to expand the first branch, which is the, you know, identifying or pointing the, the module to our input line layer. So we're going to select the only vector layer in this project. Once it's selected, the icon goes green, identifying that it's correctly set up or the input is valid. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our input area, our bounding area. So we're going to specify that to the file, the raster files georeferencing segment, because ultimately we want to put, we want the georeferencing that, of the raster layer that we create, this output raster layer that we're going to be creating, um, to match up exactly with the underlying raster layer, uh, the flooding event. Then for the output, we're going to put it in the input file. So we're going to save it there. It's going to create a new line segment. We can then go to input parameters. We're going to specify what gray level or what pixel value we want to assign to all of the to any area where a line segment exists. Basically, what pixel value we're going to assign our roads. So in this case, we're just going to choose a simple value of 1. Once we have that set up, we can then simply click Run. It'll take a few moments. As you can see, it's quite quick. Verify with our log that it was successful. And then we can then close this panel. So now what we have, if we zoom into 1 to 1 on an area, and we turn off our vector layer, you can see that we have a raster layer that identifies basically pixels that the line went through. So if we click on that, 
pixel right there, you can see that we have a pixel value of 1. And if we click off of it, so if we turn off this layer, for example, you can see that we have a no data value. So that's a very good start. So now we have data that we can work within. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to be performing our overlay analysis using our raster calculator. A very simple function that we can input here to identify where the two layers intersect. So what we want to do is we're going to use our if a equals b function. So I can double click on that. And we want to work within here. So what I want to check is I want to say if channel. So we denote channel with a uh, percentage sign. So if channel 1 equals 1. And let's just figure out, actually before we do that, we need to make sure, validate what our flood event or what value, raster value is given to our flooding event. So if we click over here, we can see that the value is 1. So now we go back to our raster calculator. Once again, use the if a equals b function. So it's a conditional uh, function. So once again, we're going to go if channel 1, which is our flooding event, equals 1, and channel 2 equals 1, then provide an output value of 1. Else, provide an output value of 0. We can then save this as an 8-bit unsigned channel. Actually, we're going to do a little bit more than that. We're going to provide, actually no, sorry, we'll do that. So we can put this as an 8-bit channel, or alternatively we can put it as a bitmap, because we're just working with two uh, values here. In this case, we're going to put it as an 8-bit channel. And we're going to save the layer. We'll create a new layer here. We'll call it flood. Or actually, we'll call it road hazard. And then we can simply click on the run button. process takes a few moments only. Then you can see what we get is we get an output where basically the flood intersected. So we're not quite done yet. What we want to do next is we want to take this output, we want to convert it back to a vector. So we're going to go back to our algorithm librarian and we're going to go RAS to line. So I'm going to take our road hazard line here put it in there. Output vector type is a line. We're going to not apply a smoothing to the vectors. And then we're going to click run. So now we have all the areas that denote a flood extracted as a separate polygon. So we can then overlay this, or we can change the color so that it's a little bit more meaningful. and then turn off these intermediate layers. And then we can turn this, for example, oops, turn on our other vector layer, and we can identify all the areas that our road intersected the flood. Of course, you can take it a little bit farther and identify the inverse, so identify all the areas where the road doesn't intersect the flood, and then combine the two vector layers together. Um, that is, of course, an option that you can, per that you can do. Uh, as far as this uh, demonstration is concerned, it was unnecessary. So, uh, but yeah, so essentially with this, you can get some very valuable information and, and precisely identify where your areas of intersect occur. So thank you for watching this episode of PCI's Tech TV.